Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to the world's most amazing magic show. I'm going to show you some card magic today. Here we go. Pick a card, any card. Now, I can't see which one you've chosen, but because I'm magic, I know that it is this one, and I'm going to show it to you now. Keep that card in your head. That is your card. Keep it a secret. Don't tell me, even if you could. And I'm going to put it back in the deck without looking at it. And then, using my magic, I'm going to shuffle the cards up neatly. Here we go. Say the magic word. Abracadabra. And, hey presto, that was your card. Am I correct? No. Oh. oh. Year three, I need your help. I'm meant to be the world's greatest magician, but and I know some of you guys can. You're great magicians and illusionists, just like these guys. Do you think you could help me, Year 3? I'm really hoping this week that you could write some instructions for me to tell me how to do magic and how to create some of those amazing illusions that you have at home. Now, if we're going to write some super instructions, I think we need to look at a good example first. Let's have a look at one and see if we can spot what we need to do to write some magical instructions. Here are some instructions I found about how to make a coin disappear. Let's read it together. You will need scissors, glue, a pencil, two sheets of paper or card, a handkerchief, opaque, that means you can't see through it, plastic cup, a clear one, and a coin. Number one. First, cut out a circle of paper and neatly glue it to the rim of the cup. Two, then turn the cup upside down on the white paper so that the paper circle is disguised. Three, next, show your audience the coin and tell them you will make it disappear magically. Four, after that, put the handkerchief over the cup and place both of them over the coin carefully. Five, when you've done that, lift up the handkerchief slowly, but don't move the cup. It will look like the coin has vanished because it is under the paper circle. Six. Finally, make the coin reappear by covering the cup with the handkerchief and lifting it back up. Top tip. You can make this trick more impressive by asking a volunteer to supply the coin. This way, they'll know it's not a trick coin. Just make sure to lay it on the paper. Now it's your turn to read it through and... As you do, can you make a note of all the fantastic features that you spot? For example, what types of words are there? Could you spot any verbs? Nouns, for example? How do we know what order to follow the instructions in? And how have they made the instructions so clear? Press pause as many times as you want as it scans through to jot down all the fantastic features of instructions that you can spot. Let's check together. Did you spot that it had a really clear title and an equipment list to show people what they need to complete the trick? It had clear pictures and each of the instructions started with a number to show the order to do it in. They also started with what are called fronted adverbials of time. Fronted adverbials, well, we know they come at the front, at the start of a sentence, and they describe when it's happening, if it's a front of the verbal of time. And there were lots of bossy, or the posh word is imperative, verbs. Words like show, tell, that tell your reader what to do. There were also some adverbs in there. Those words that often end in L-Y that tell them how to do something, like carefully. And there were some conjunctions like but, because, so that gave some extra information about the instructions. And finally, it ended with a little top tip, a little bit of extra information to help them wow their audience. 
Well done if you spotted any of those fantastic features of instruction writing. Now we've got our steps to success ready for our turn. Now, I'd love some instructions from you about how to do either a magic trick or create an illusion. Now, for my turn, I'm going to have a go at the one trick that I can actually do. And if you don't have a magic trick yourself or an illusion and you want to use my trick when you write your instructions, that's absolutely fine as well. Let me show you the one trick that I can actually do. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, prepare yourself for some amazing magic because today I'm going to show you a trick using just a piece of string. As you can see, it is one whole piece of string, no cuts in it. However, if I fold it exactly in half and get my scissors, I'm going to cut right through the middle of it. There you go, you can see that is clearly cut. However, if I use my magic wand, and say the magic words, we should, abracadabra, be able to put it back into one whole piece of string. Ta-da! So for today's activity, all you'll need is a sheet of paper, lined or plain, it doesn't matter, and a pencil, because we're going to start by mapping out a plan for our instructions. Now remember, you could write some instructions for my trick, or you might have your own trick or illusion that you want to draw pictures of today. Now, to do it with you, I'm going to show you my little trick. Now, when I cut that piece of string, there was actually this little piece of string hidden in my hands that I cut instead of the big piece of string. So I'm going to think about which pictures I might need to draw to show someone how to do that trick. Well, I'll definitely start them with the smaller piece of string and I'll show that it's hidden in the hand. Now 3P know that drawing is something I have to use my growth mindset for, so bear with me, I will do my very best. And then once you've put the string in your hand, you need to close your hand. So I'm going to draw a closed hand now. Well, two closed hands. And you can show the audience the longer piece of string. Then once you've shown them the longer piece of string, with that little bit still hidden in your hand, you have... to put the long piece in your hand, but pull the shorter piece out. The next part is, well, with that shorter piece of string, you cut it into two pieces using the pair of scissors. Let's draw the handles. Then, once you've cut the smaller piece of string with the scissors, you need to push that smaller piece of string back into your hand so that the audience can only see the long piece again. And they only think there's one piece anyway. And then finally, once you've put that short piece of string back in, then keeping it carefully hidden in your closed hand, you can stretch back out the long piece of string and show your audience that you didn't really cut it at all. Or, in fact, show them that you did cut it, but you magically restored it, of course. Now, you'll notice that for your plan today, once you've thought of a few pictures that show how your trick is done, or your illusion, or my one, if you want to use mine as well, that's fine, then can you see how I've left? some space around the pictures as well, because later on in the week, we're gonna add some words around this to help us write our full set of instructions. So once you've drawn out your plan today with a few pictures of what you might need to do, make sure you keep that ready for tomorrow's lesson because we're going to add on some more words. Well, good luck with drawing your pictures for your trick or illusion today. And just before we finish, I want to show you some super work that I spotted from last week's English lessons. 
I wish I had time to share all of your Magic Box poetry because there were some amazing examples emailed to us, but I wanted to focus on a few examples from the bubble children at school, such as Lily Rose, who's created this wonderful poem. This is Lottie's, who's thought of some brilliant adjectives, nouns, verbs, and even some adverbs as well. And finally, this excellent poem from Travis. I've added on some creativity dojo points for all of you. And even if I didn't get a chance to show yours today, don't worry because you all earned lots of dojo points for your fantastic writing last week. Well done. Now, have fun drawing the different parts of your trick or illusion. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>